uh, let's start. So I'm happy to present some of the work that went into the branch that implemented OpenMP offloading for the uh, NVIDIA target uh, in GCC. Not all of that work, but hopefully the more entertaining parts. So uh, as a quick background on PTX, uh, the PTX is an abstract uh, virtual machine and instruction set architecture that NVIDIA is using to uh, have a stable code generation target for their GPUs. So a lot of things are abstracted away. There is no uh, explicit hardware registers. So the registers that you have in PTX work like uh, scalar variables in C. You declare the, ver the registers you are going to use. And they are uh, all uh, Kali saved. So they are never uh, clobbered when you make a function call. So uh, the calling con convention is all abstracted away as well. So um, there is no like a uh, uh, register uh, where you have the return value. You just have a, a special area wh where the return value is like laid out like in memory. And the stack pointer is not explicitly visible as well. So uh, since uh, PTX is intended to program the highly parallel uh, GPU, they have a execution model that is a little bit unusual. So one execution context is uh, called either a thread like usual or a lane. And the private storage it has, it has its own registers na naturally and also the, the stack memory that is the uh, that dot local memory space is also private to, um, to a lane. Uh, then we have the uh, concept of a warp. That is the fixed number of lanes that are executed in lockstep. So they, all the time, they execute the same instruction. And thanks to that, they have a way to exchange a, s a certain register ac across the, uh, the lanes. Uh, then a group of warps can form a, a block or a CTA, as uh, the NV NVIDIA calls it, the cooper cooperative thread array. Uh, they have a instruction for quick uh, barrier synchronization, and they have another level of private storage on that level, which is the shared memory. And finally, th there can be a large number of blocks. They do not have any anything in common, so they have just the uh, global memory of the GPU they can operate on. And if they want to uh, like uh, perform mutual instruction, uh, mutual exclusion, they can use uh, atomics to achieve that to some degree. but. Uh, uh, there, there, there is no guarantee, for example, that you can uh, perform a barrier syn synchronization across all blocks because uh, the, all the blocks cannot be uh, executing simultaneously if the GPU is oversubscribed, if the number of blocks is more than the GPU can handle at a, uh, simultaneously. <laughs> and the important thing to note is that uh, the way uh, uh, the warp warps execute uh, is not s s something that we usually see on CPUs. N NVIDIA calls it uh, SIMT, uh, single instruction multiple threads. So like I sa said, the uh, lanes in the warp, they have the uh, same program counter. So when you uh, dispatch an instruction, uh, the instruction is dispatched to multiple execution units for different registers that are private to different threads. And when you would not normally be able to do that, if you execute a conditional branch and the controlling predicate of that conditional branch is different in different warp members, uh, that is handled by uh, executing both branches uh, sequentially. So if you have an if then else, first you execute if then, then you go back to if and you execute if else. That can uh, nest, so you can have a, a like nested divergent branching. It works for loops and so on. And uh, the way it is handled in hardware, you have a lane mask, which is uh, basically a bit mask for uh, each of the warp member indicating if that lane is active or not. So if it is not active, no side effects can, can take place. And uh, when you uh, the way the hardware knows that it, it, it has to go back to the branch and start executing the else branch of the original condition is that uh, uh, when the PTX code is translated to machine code, the PTX translation layer is responsible for 
inserting uh, reconversion instructions. And uh, the, the, the place uh, where they insert it are the immediate post dominators of the branch that would be diver diversion. So uh, as I say, uh, the these constraints, the, the possible uh, control flow patterns you, you could implement. So if you would try to implement a, mu a mutex, that works like a function call, so mu mutex underscore log. And you would try to uh, have it um, have the lane granularity, so you could uh, have a mutual exclu exclusion between lanes. That would not work because when you uh, would uh, return from that function, or, or even earlier if you had a uh, busy loop uh, there, it will just deadlock because you would not be able to reconverge all the uh, threads. So uh, this motivates the unusual mapping of uh, PTX execution mode to OpenMP execution mode. So uh, OpenMP teams are naturally mapped to blocks, so that is straightforward. But then when we have uh, threads on the OpenMP level, we map them to ROPs. So the, uh, actually a group of 32 execution contexts on, on the GPU. And a way to program uh, those execution units separately is to use the SIM planes on the OpenMP level. That is uh, exactly the way OpenACC open does, does it as well. And I think it is different to how uh, LLVM of loading approach the problem. They do not have a uh, mapping of threads to warps. They map OpenMP threads directly to PTX threads. And I think that constrains uh, the variety of uh, OpenMP con constructs they could implement. So, but here we have this duality since we when the, in terms of the original user program, there is one execution context that is the OpenMP thread. We actually implement it in terms of uh, 32 separate execution contexts. And we have to ensure that uh, those execution contexts mirror each other. So they uh, have the same variables, they have the same control flow. And uh, the way we implement that is we uh, instrument the atomics and the syscalls that happen in uh, those paths. So they happen exactly once per uh, the synchronous group. And the side effect, uh, the, the effect from that, from that instruction, so basically the return value of the atomic and the uh, and the syscall is propagated to all lanes, so they have the uh, same local state, but we ex the side effect happened only once. So uh, in terms of the uh, changes that landed on the branch, they fall roughly into three different cat categories. So the changes to the NDPTX backend to support the uh, OpenMP mapping, the changes to libgomp, that is uh, a bit on the heavy side, but uh, on the other hand, a lot of that is the changes to change logs and uh, the GPL. So it, it, it might be a little uh, less than that in terms of actual source code changes. And the middle cha and changes are mostly in OpenMP lowering, and those changes are mostly for supporting the uh, OpenMP simd. So uh, the interesting thing about this is since we have a libgom port, we use the exact classic uh, OpenMP lowering for the parallel and all the non-offloading features that uh, existed. So I hope you can be a little bit, bit happy with that because it uh, doesn't like change the compiler too much, it just changes the libgom to handle uh, all the interface, uh, the, the interface, interface boundary that the compiler ex expects it to handle. So uh, the rest of my talk is mostly about the last point, the middle end changes to support OpenMPSIM. That is the 
the more interesting part and the part that was not heavily discussed on the mailing list. Uh, as for LibGomb, uh, it, it is not a highly creative work. It is uh, mostly a straightforward model for what existed for the CPUs. So uh, the challenge that uh, I faced with uh, implementing uh, SIMP support is that the way GC works, uh, we have the, uh, the source code, we uh, lower it via simplification and opening the lowering to GIMPL. And then that GIMPL will be compiled twice first for the host CPU, and then it will be streamed out, streamed in via the LTO mechanism and compiled again for the accelerator arch. And, but for the PTX uh, target, ideally we would uh, use a different uh, lowering for the SIMT regions because on the CPU, uh, the way GCC implements SIMT for OpenMP is a combination of the, uh, like the auto vectorization for, for the loops and a few functions, in internal functions in the, in the GOMP SIMD namespace that are used to like, explicitly implement some of the uh, fu functionality, but uh, naturally the auto vectorizer ha has to handle the semantics of those internal functions. And for uh, the PTX target, we can w would not want to use that because it is like not useful to rely on the auto vectorizer auto vectorization because the uh, uh, the hardware is uh, implemented in terms of different execution contexts in, in the first place. So we, we would lower it like that. So we would want to lower it to uh, the explicitly parallel uh, execution for the vector regions. So the idea uh, is to uh, lower it using the internal functions that will be in the comp simt namespace and I arrange that after we uh, know exactly for which target we are generating code, so either the host or the uh, PTX target, we can collapse back uh, the loop that was lowered for the simt target uh, to the pretty much the original form that the vectorizer can, can uh, then handle on and so on. So uh, I think it is better to use examples for that. So starting for the trio loop th that is annotated with the SIMD uh, clause, we change it to use the offset. Uh, the the to have the stride multiplied by the vectorization factor. So uh, the, the sim plane is the number of the uh, ex execution context within the warp. So it is from one to 31 on, on the GPU and the sim uh, VF is the number of lanes. So it is 32 on the GPUs. So the way the, the loop is changed, the stride is, the, is increased in a way that the original iteration space is covered, but it is covered by uh, 32 separate execution contexts. And when we compile this uh, loop for the host, we can uh, uh, translate back the new internal functions to the trivial forms. So the lane is zero and the vectorization factor is one. And opening PDFLOW is an a GIMPL pass uh, that runs uh, just after the IPA uh, pass sequence. So it is the uh, the first GIMPL pass after that. And uh, so this way the, the following classes can clean, clean it up and the uh, loop that the auto vectorizer sees is pretty, pretty much the original loop. And the same stands for the, uh, the other side, for the accelerator side, when we have the uh, functions in the GOMP SIMD namespace, and we can uh, collapse, them back, collapse them to trivial forms in the similar fashion. Um, so for 
more complicated loops. For example, if we have a safe loan clause that uh, the which allows the user to say the maximum vectorization factor for that loop, we can take now the minimum of the safe length and the vectorization factor and use that to partition the iteration space. For uh, more complicated clauses, uh, so first of all, there is the last pri private clause that says that the value of uh, variable b after the loop will be the value of that variable taken from the last iteration of the original loop. So the way we lowered it for CMT execution is first of all, we roll back the uh, the loop counter to the position it would have in that execution context if that execution context uh, like looped after the last iteration sequ sequentially. And we compute the end condition in the same way that uh, the existing OpenMP lowering would, would compute it. So this says if we are beyond the original iteration space. And if any uh, thread has reached the end of the iteration space, then we have to figure out which one th that was. So we take the condition and this internal function implements uh, the computation of the index of the lane in the warp the earliest lane that has the condition true. So that will be the index of the lane that actually executed the last iteration. And then we take the value of variable b from that lane and assign it in all execution contexts. Uh, so it is important to note that this looks maybe a bit complicated, but the way it is implemented on the PTX level is uh, just a few instructions because all of those have uh, fast, uh, have reasonable hardware support in, ter in, in terms of actual instructions that you can use. So for reduction, uh, the idea is straightforward. So we uh, have the variable v that we computed separately on uh, in multiple execution contexts, and we have to take the sum from those execution contexts and ha have it available I after the loop. So th the classic implementation for that is to have a tree reduction that uh, iterates by powers of two from one to half of the vec vectorization factor. And it performs a butterfly exchange across lanes uh, with reduction on each step. So after five iterations of this loop, assuming the vectorization factor is 32, each lane has the sum of variable v from all lanes. So uh, actually, there is a, a minor complication about that, but it's quite interesting. So uh, we have to require that the reduction operation is commutative. We do not require associativity that would not hold for floating points, but commutativity we do require. And it turns out there is an, an exception for commutati commutativity on, uh, on scalar types, and the floating point is not commutative for NAN uh, values. But actually, we have to ensure that even for NAN values, we end up with the same bit pattern because it is observable from the uh, from the user program. They can look at the bit uh, at the payload of the of the not a number value. And if they can observe that the it is different in like execution context that was supposed to be the same, the same open EP thread, then things will go wrong. And so we have, oops, make one additional step. We have to synchronize the non-payload. So if the, if the value is not equal to itself, we have to propag propagate one single NAND doesn't matter from which lane, so we can take lane zero and copy it everywhere. And as funny as it may sound, there is also support for ordered seamed, uh, which says that 
this statement in, in the CMD loop has to be uh, executed in an ordered fashion across the uh, iterations of the loop. So although the we can, can run the uh, iterations of the loop in parallel in uh, the warp execution context, we have to implement a simple mutual ex exclusion just for the uh, ordered uh, statement. But, okay, so we can return to, to the later if there's much interest in how it works. So now for the more uh, uh, questionable stuff that I would welcome community feedback on. So the most important thing is that we have to, we need to outline the SIMD regions into separate functions for executing on the GPU. And the reason for that, for that is we need to perform a switch from stacks for automatic storage that are per warp to stacks that are actually per lane in terms of uh, PTX lanes. And as far as I, as I know, there is no reasonable way to model that on the GCIR. So the only way I know to actually have it in GCC is to model it in terms of like function boundaries. So you can call a function from another, another, another function and um, on that boundary you can arrange uh, a change of the stack pointer. So when, when you talk about stack, the IR is essentially uh, local variables, right? Because there, there are no extra stacks in the Yes, on GIMPL, on GIMPL I do mean the automatic variables in terms of C. And on RTL, unfortunately, it is a bit more complicated because I also mean uh, the uh, spills. Oh, sorry. At least for now. Um, so um, I'm afraid there is no like perfect way to arrange that in GCC. So my current plan is to uh, reuse the existing outlining uh, machinery in OpenMP lowering, which does exist for task regions and parallel regions for obvious reasons. And uh, since we do outline this function, but we actually do not want to have a separate function on the CPU side, we have to mark it in lineable as soon as possible if we know we, we are like have streamed in LTO for the host CPU, mark it in lineable and hope that like everything happens. Yeah, so instead of trying to inline in line with the CPR. I'm wondering since we are really having only one IR copy for all of those targets and only the the LTO streaming gets up the copy as well. So so we, we don't on the host compilation we don't do the cloning essentially for all variants, but we keep only one copy and it has to work for all Yeah, uh, I did consider that. I did not implement it because it looks like there is no good way to clone loop either in GCC. So I tried, I didn't find a good way. And so that is what I have uh, in a private branch. Um, so admittedly, it is 
uh, not a beautiful way to implement that. So uh, the way it works, that uh, sorry, the SIMD region becomes uh, wrapped in a parallel region that has an like ephemeral SIMT rig uh, closed that indicates that this parallel region is not actually an entry to a parallel region uh, uh, in terms of OpenMP, but it is an entry to a SIMD region that has to be outlined into a separate function. And that allows to implement it in a reasonably lightweight way. But as I said, if there are, if this is uh, actually an abuse of gamification, uh, let me know and yeah, let's. I tried, I did not find a good way. Yeah, so the, the way I want to uh, have it this way is the automatic discovery of sharing, uh, uh, the forwarding of variables for the shared, uh, like, clause that would appear so at the... So, one last uh, funny thing is that, first of all, a background. So, uh, on this slide, there are two programs. The program on the left invokes undefined behavior. The program on the right does not invoke undefined behavior. And the difference between those is that program on the right formally takes the address of variable n that is then passed on to printf. So, uh, it, it is a feature of the C11 standard. like of the draft of the C11 standard as I understood it. So since uh, this variable on the left could formally, could potentially have the register uh, keyword in its declaration, uh, the standard says that uh, if you read the uninitialized variable, it invokes undefined behavior. But if the va variable has its address taken, even formally, then you get an indeterminate value, but you do get a value instead of invoking un undefined behavior. So I think uh, GC does not dis distinguish between the two situations at present, and that means that GC has to be conservative and not do any optimizations that assume that the behavior is undefined. Uh, so it's a bug. <laughs> yeah, it's a bug in the standard. <laughs> <laughs> but the interpreted value is almost the same as... Yeah, but so there is a reason that I mentioned this, yeah. because it matters for the seem lowering. So if we have a, a target region that is translated for the PTX target, and outside of the SIMD region, we have an automatic variable that is not initialized, and we branch on that uninitialized value, if the registers holding that value in different execution context actually have a different value, we execute branch in a different way in a two execution context that in terms of the original program were the one execution context. And so uh, we like have a quantum entanglement of the two branches. Okay, so, so is it this is like undefined, but if you take the address, it would only take one branch according to the standard, but it's not the original. Exactly. Okay. So wait, 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 wait. does anybody have a copy of C11 I would like to? Yeah, yeah I know. I'm, I'm trying to figure this out because you... Especially if you do multiple reads of the same variable, you need to read the same initial name thing. Right, that's what <laughs> I was thinking, because the interpreted value means... I, I, I think it has to be equal to M. In terms of the, no, no, no. Like in terms of, of the virtual machine, you have one execution context. It is important. 
in terms of the, of the virtual machine, there is a single execution context, and there is a single re read of the variable. There is no two reads of the variable, so there is no excuse. No, no, it, but, but, but this is openly charged, so it's run by a single. But it's right. implicitly in some right? Yeah, as as no. soon as you put it in a parallel or something like yeah. that, yeah. teams, then suddenly you have many copies of that variable. Right. Each private and so each one can have a different. Every, every, every iteration reads the variable again, right? So that if it's inside a loop. But this is not a loop, that's the thing. No, it's no, but it's when it's you it's have it's the it's flash teams are parallel, then. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting non problem. Yeah, <laughs> like the point was the is there an, an easy way to fix that? Because an easy way to fix that is to arrange that uh, the reaching definitions actually are not uninitialized reaching de definitions. So there is a probably a reasonable solu solution for, for that already in GC that I'm not aware of. If you want to talk, I guess you can initialize to zero for, yeah. Yeah, for colors, but for structures. For structures, there, there is no problem. For, for, for everything that lives on stack, there is no pro problem. The problem is for uh, things that live on registers. So, uh, I guess uh, finding a uh, fixed report is open to be and one with two. Question. Does a runtime find behavior binding there? Uh, it's, no, it's in the yeah, same yeah. Oh, no, this one's undefined. This one's undefined. This yeah. one's undefined. Yeah. So it would just take the address of n. Formally, n. yeah. And then it becomes less, less undefined. Really? Okay, sorry. So the question was, since this is undefined behavior, why do we care? And uh, the answer is, we if this region extended with just a single statement that takes the address of n formally, then it ceases to be undefined behavior. It becomes defined behavior with an indeterminate value of n, so it should execute just one of the tests instead of potentially both of them. So, so we would be actually acting open and priori, but we know that tests have a status, so we can rewrite it to be modified, or just inside the open region, and then we will keep it addressable and it will be of stack. Uh, GC has to fix the, this in a generic way anyway, because no. it, ma no. it matters. No, we don't, we don't have to. We'll standard it's broken. The standard is broken. Yeah. <laughs> we, standard we know better than the standard. I don't think it's broken. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out where it would actually specify the difference between the it's, it's I don't it's, it's, it's the standard specifies that uninitialized memory reads is not undefined behavior, but in the candidate. And uh, as soon as oh. you take the address, it is, of course, memory. Uses are still undefined behavior, not indefinite values. Yeah, well, all of them. 
But it's so easy. I, 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 would, I would suggest this is to find a defect report with an well, defect well, report with open C. The thing with actually what we do is not using the undefined list, but we are, we are actually giving just an index new value. So it's, it's not like that we are, that we are yeah. deleting the artist on, on, on yeah, these kinds of constructs. But we are using the undefined behavior as soon as we re rewrite it into SSA, and yeah. in Propagate it just ignore the, the undefined value in Propagate. Well, yeah, but, 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 but it's still, it's it's still determining. It's what, and what they do is every time the same. So the, difference, the difference here is you're outlining it in Yeah. So um, actually, I have one question for the uh, the the, audi the audience. So uh, if we roll back to, to to this kind of stuff, so uh, uh, these are internal functions that are uh, defined in internal defined .def in GCC, and uh, I have to arrange that they are properly translated to the actual PTX instructions. So uh, the way I currently do that is there is a code in internal .c that knows how to translate each uh, internal function in this namespace to a, a instruction that the backend is supposed to expose. And I wonder if that is actually the way it's supposed to be. Uh, because it is a little bit of a code duplication because uh, uh, like, and uh, the other thing is th those are uh, like implicitly templated on the type of the variable because it can be a float, a double, or int or anything, and it has to take the uh, the input value and produce the output value in, th in the same type. So uh, the way I implement that is that the RT R RTL expander has to produce the the proper mode based on the input mode. Like that is straightforward, but there is the things called optaps, and I wonder if I should try to use that instead. So the, the, the principal internal functions are the simple uh, way of doing optap like stuff, and uh, if you can, well one one might think of that basically have a way to express optap whatever in simple that is just using the <coughs> function, but so the optap expand has a role. Yeah, so internally your backend should define the. If there is a generic expansion, yeah. so you, you look up the octet. If there is octet, you do this. Otherwise, you do something else, yeah. which is generic. Is, is there is a good example for that yeah. somewhere? Why I think various internal functions, uh, the math library functions, yeah, the and so on, have all, all octets. 
Yeah. Uh, that is generally for new doping teams who want to decide whether the doping is something users should or can use or not. And yeah. If it's something that the users should not use, then internal functions. Yeah, I would have, I would have liked to make the doping not not use visible in the PCS back end, so I didn't know how to do that. I didn't want to start making more. Uh, at, at some point, we were trying to hack like Twitter Spaces yeah. as well. So Yeah, so uh, uh, first of all, this is uh, like closely related to the way that the SIMD reduction is handled, because for SIMD reduction, uh, there is uh, pretty much the same loop, uh, uh, a similar, similar loop emitted after the loop body. So I like wanted to make those look similar, if possible, and um, a minor difference is that uh, the three optimizers can, d I think, derive the number of executions of that loop, and that all three they could want to like unroll it, but th th there is no point actually because the PTX translation layer can also unroll that loop on its own, so it would not make much difference. Uh, which case? Oh, please go on. It is not necessary. If you do not annotate the branch, you do not lose correctness. You lose, you potentially lose something on the optimization side, but it, it is not a, co a, a correctness sacrifice. Does, does it No, I don't think so. I think from the domination perspective, it is um, pretty much like sound. Uh, I am not aware of any correctness problems here.
Ah. But you don't have to use it. If you don't use skins, it defaults to basically one skin. Well, but that means that you can only use one rod in any game sure. area. Sure. Ah, okay. So, alright. Yeah, so this talk covers only the SIMD lowering. So the the other lowering is inherited from the, the classic OpenMP lowering for, for CPUs and uh, it works like naturally for us. So uh, the, the it, it has to work even for a single block and of course if you are writing something in OpenMP and charging in GPS, you really want to use teams because yeah, yeah. they are there and unless you uh, at the same time run a different offloading job, you really want to start it. You always want to know the number of teams before you actually charge it, right? So for example, like two teams, if you uh, two teams construct in a single target, you would run into problems. With well, right now we uh, have changed in the OpenMP 4.5 uh, the wording so that if you have a merged target team construct, yeah, then the evolution of the of these two crosses is before the target region, okay. and there is a discovery code in in the gimplifier now that if, for instance, you use a obviously first prize variable, then then you get the same beha behavior even with non uh, non open construct. Right. So uh, so we now uh, copy the clauses also to the target construct and it's it's given to the yeah, but, but runtime. Yeah. I don't know how exactly it's been implemented, but <coughs> it, it pretty much ignores like everything should be done at the target level for for this for okay, for, yeah, for, yeah, for uh, host uploading and stuff like that. It really deal with a library call which change the value for something specific. So yeah, yeah, yeah. To expand on that, uh, my recollection from the reading the spec is that uh, you cannot have more than uh, one team's region in a target region. You definitely. It has to be contained there. Basically, has to be nothing around it for it to be actually stable. Yeah, and for for that reason, uh, we can handle it uh, in a mostly natural way by pre-starting the number of teams that we think reasonable. So, either derived from the gimbal lowering, or if the gimbal lowering could not deduce, we can ask the driver how many uh, blocks could be resident given the constraints, so given the hardware capability and the number of registers we are using. And gives a, that gives us the upper bound of the number of teams that could be potentially executing on the GPU. So we launch that number of teams. And if at the moment the teams region is entered and the GOMP underscore teams receives a value that is lower than that, we can exit. The extra, uh, the the extra teams. Any other questions? Okay, so in terms of performance, uh, the disclaimer is that not much performance tuning has, has been done. 
And uh, if we take an artificial benchmark that does something like barely useful, like computing the dot products or uh, like a matrix multiplication, if we run it for a significant time on the GPU, we have the same performance as OpenSC or the naive CUDA code, but we have a little bit of a problem if the target region is short because the time required to start executing the user code is a bit high. And the reason for that is we have a few malloc calls while we go through libgomp code. And it was a surprise to me that uh, NVIDIA's implementation of malloc is too slow. It is extremely slow. So by reducing the number of malloc calls, uh, I went from like 200 microseconds to uh, 50 microseconds. And that, uh, that was a huge improvement. So the, what you actually want to have is five microseconds, at least according to NVIDIA's profiler. On the target. Yeah, and that is not the only problem. So naturally, as we go through the guts of libcomp, we have a lot of like several function calls, and they are not like blazing, blazingly fast as well. So we should try to maybe optimize that. But um, uh, I mean, from the maintenance pr perspective, that is not an obvious trade-off because. Like right now, our libgomp port looks very similar to the CPU libgomp, so that should be uh, nice and desirable, I think. And if we, if I try to butcher it too much, it will be like too much unlike the CPU part. So that is a non-obvious trade-off. So and so far, I have not tried to do that. So at the moment, we have the 50 microseconds sacrificed at the start of the target region to start executing the user code. So at the moment, uh, the way to use this is to have uh, target regions that have an, like, at least an order of magnitude more work, so at least 500 microseconds or more. So there are various things we can do. For instance, I think we call the call like of the plugin for, for each memory copy somewhere, which is fetch it. I want to copy this amount of bytes from here to here, and we just so basically instruct it what to do, and it should just be all the other parts. Yeah, because various plugins have ways how to do something right, read, read, uh, read the um, write the stuff out. I guess it's more important for the plugin to have this. When I'm talking to people on some workloads, it's much faster than Intel. On some it, it depends. Yeah, because sometimes Intel uh, OpenMP library has very complex ways of doing something. Sometimes and sometimes the integrity is, is, is <laughs> much better. Yeah, it's, it's it's the nature of all benchmarks. Sometimes it's faster, sometimes it's slower. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, sure. There are many places I, I know we should spend time on, like on the on the various logs and spinning circuits from from college and stuff. But I think I have to stop now. Thank you.